Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Trinity Trading. My name is Jonathan. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we are going to go ahead and do the broad market analysis. I'll be quickly going over the SPY, the Q's, DIA, IWM, Gold, TLT, TNX, the Dollar, which is the DXY, the SKU, the PCAL, the VIX, and then we'll look at futures, ES, NASDAQ, oil, and then Bitcoin. And guess what, guys? If you like Bitcoin, I'll be looking at trading the uh, micro Bitcoin futures this week. And I'll give you that reason and what I'm looking at at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and get started with the SPY and our neutral strategy. Guys, please do me a favor. Go back. Look at the videos that I've been providing for you. They are absolutely on par and they've done very, very well. Last week was amazing. We had some thousand percent winners uh, and we're going to do it again this week. Let's go ahead and show you how to trade the SPY or sorry, just the neutral strategy altogether. We're going to have a box. This box is made up of Fibonacci's, supply and demand, EMA, cloud, support and resistance. All of that strategically and synergistically comes together to create some of the best levels out there in the market. That box is going to say neutral in it, right? Pretty straightforward. And what I'm looking for is the top of this box Again, all those levels come together for it to be a resistance level. Uh, the bottom of the, the box is supposed to be support. And if you think about it, if the, if the resistance breaks, I'm looking to go long. If the support breaks, I'm looking to go short. Okay. Now, I will tell you, we ended on a very extreme bullish trend once again, like we anticipated. Okay. And because of that, I'm more or less looking to go long on pullbacks. So it doesn't necessarily mean I'm lining up to go short. So again, if for some reason we get a pullback into this week with Jerome on the mic and uh, the market's getting a little volatile, I'll actually be looking at levels where I want to buy, not necessarily short. Let's go ahead and show you again. If price breaks over the top neutral line, I'm looking to take that trade into the targets that I provide. Each target to the upside should serve as resistance. So typically what I'm doing is I'm taking several positions and then I'm trimming into that top uh, target. If I had a stop placed, it's typically underneath the neutral, especially if I'm buying weekly options at the end of the week, not zero DTE. If I'm taking zero DTE trades, it's a little bit different. But on the weekly, my stops are here. Let's say that we hit our target. We go ahead and trim up here. Very important. Trimming is winning. All right. Trimming <laughs> is winning. All right. I promise you. So. I'm going to trim here and I'm going to take this stop that's right here. Okay, very important. And I'm going to move that stop underneath where I'm comfortable. Okay, where I'm comfortable underneath this target. Let's say I'm comfortable, you know, 23% down from a Fibonacci perspective. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and place my stop right under here. And that way I can ensure that I continue with my profits. And then I do the same thing every time we hit one of our targets to the upside. Now, again, I'm not anticipating going short this week, but if I were to go short, same thing, folks, it's going to be look over here to the right of your screen. The stops are going to go here. I'm going to go short down into my levels. Okay, and I would expect these levels to be support. So therefore, I'm going to trim, okay, to the downside, trim. And then that stop that was here, I'm going to bring that down into here where I'm comfortable. And that way I can ensure that I keep profits. Now that you understand, very straightforward. Again, if you want to learn how to put these together because you've seen so much success with these, then reach out, come to Trendy Trading. We have trials. We have an awesome special going on right now. So again, please check us out so that you can learn how to develop these blueprints. And that way, you know, you're learning um, this for yourself and you're not relying on somebody else. All right. So we have those numbers. All right, guys, check it out. A couple things I want to talk about. It's going to be trend. Okay. Candle formations, EMA cloud, and now you know how to trade it. Let's go ahead and take a bigger look at this. So 
If we break above 471.56, I'm looking to go long and trim into 473.38, 475.18, and 477.99. If for some reason we pull back to lower portion of the box around 467.39, again, I'm looking to see to buy support. All right, I will be coaching and then I use my proprietary uh, scripts to go long, uh, just depending on if I get that buy or sell signal. Okay. If for some reason you decide you want to go short under 467.39, I'm looking for targets uh, potentially into 466.57 and then down to 464.67. Again, I'm looking for buying opportunity. We had a really nice bullish candle. We pulled back into the cloud. We didn't stay there very long as I expected because I've told you several, several times that the cloud has been an opportunity to buy every single time this year. So, we are above the cloud now. We're looking really strong. My biggest reservation going into this week on the SPY is that they closed us right underneath the trendy edge. See that pink line? That pink line right there is resistance, okay? And a lot of times when they open us up into the resistance, you could be looking for price to reject or like a slight gap up and then a pullback. All right, so the next thing that I want to tell you is if for some reason price rejects here, I wouldn't expect it to start to break down below the 467.39. A matter of fact, it stays extremely bullish as long as my banners stay green. This is one thing that we use here at Trendy Trading to really help us stay in a trade. Basically, these will change depending on calculations that we formulated in here. So if this goes from like a green to a yellow, which is neutral, we know to pump the brakes. If it goes from a green to red, we know, hey, we need to be thinking about selling the rip instead of buying it. Okay, so please understand that. Everything on the screen here is to help me take that trade. Just look at the levels. Look at the results afterwards, okay? I encourage you to go back and look at our videos that we continue to push out. So overall, my sentiment on the SPY opening up, possible slight gap up on a Sunday night in futures, and then look for a possible reject rejection as we get closer into FOMC and Jerome being on the mic. I believe that is Wednesday. Now, Monday, we don't have any econ news. So again, we could pop and uh, sort of go sideways uh, on Monday. Okay. All right. So QQQ, same thing. Let's go ahead and look at formations trend. Overall, the uh, the trend is, um, you know, very bullish in my opinion. Not only did we round out from the cloud like we anticipated, uh, but now um, we close on a very bullish note. When you look over here, notice that this pink line uh, compared to the uh, spy or the trendy edge uh, is we have some distance here. Uh, we also over here on the right hand side on the daily you have like this inverse uh, head and shoulders look which is a very bullish look and I'm you know if price can break over this level of 398.18 I'm looking to go long into 401, 404, 405.97 and 408.36 and again trimming into all those positions and raising those stops. If for some reason we break down then I'm looking for that 394.97 level to be support and if not then I'll check it back at around 391.96. Basically what I'm saying is I'm not really willing to go short in here. I'm looking for the bounce play. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, other than that, things look pretty good. And again, this looks like it could really rip towards the highs uh, into the year end. Let's go over here to the DIA. I told you guys last week, DIA, um, I wasn't going to change the blueprint. Um, look at the results, guys. We pushed um, just like we thought we would here. And let me just go ahead and show you so that you understand where I'm coming from. So uh, we're doing these for 1213. Give me one second here. I think it's on our second one. Yeah, and I believe it was 1128. There we go. This was last week. This is what I gave you guys, okay? So I save all these. Um, and the reason why I do that is because they're so successful. Uh, the strategy is so successful. Um, it blows my mind. You know, and I've been doing it for almost five years. I put these together for five years uh, and I'd like to save them just to show you how well they work. It's a if this, then that scenario. But look at this price came down into the support. We pushed above neutral. We hit all three targets and we ended on a very positive note here on the Dow Jones. 
All right, let's get back. So again, about 359.89, looking for a move into 362.57 by 363.24. I would expect a little bit of resistance in there. Do be careful. We have an inside and down here for you supply and demand traders. Um, you know, we may not even get to the 362.57. Let's, uh, again, I'll be coaching. I don't typically trade the DIA. That's just me. Um, but if I were trading it, I would be careful right around uh, the 361.20 area. So if you're if you're opening into that area, I would be looking to see 361.20 can actually support to get that move into 363. Okay, uh, but you can see the levels here again. Uh, they're all here for you. And for some reason, if we gap down uh, into support, I'll be looking at buying the dip. IWM, this is probably most likely uh, my number one chart here. And I think it has been for a long time. It just tends to like let us down a lot. Um, but it has created some amazing range going into the year end. Uh, Again, take note of the inside and down here. Uh, this is what I call a forecast. I'm looking for an inside and up formation. And so what I'll be watching for very important this week is that the candle starts to go for the weekly. Even if we dip, as soon as we start breaking over last week's base, I'm thinking long and we could see something like this into this week. All right, so again, notice here we have a super bearish trend. Yearly is extremely bullish and weekly is neutral. We have a smorgasbord there, folks. This is not like my favorite thing. Um, this means for me smaller and then adding on conviction at the end of the day, as long as it can hold above this 218.11, I'm looking for a move later into the, or maybe sooner than later, into these upper targets at 238 by 241. Let's go ahead and look at gold. I'm going to make these really quick. This looks like it's rounding out. It found support at the trendy edges. See the pink and the blue line. So as long as those are holding on gold, you could see a very small pop, possibly into 167.85 by 168. I'm not interested in gold. If you have more questions about it, reach out to me. This is a new blueprint. I would say, you know, we're still trading this the same exact way. I personally am not going to be trading it. Pretty boring trade this year. Uh, same thing with TLT. Not going to put a lot of emphasis on here. Uh, I did not change the blueprint. You can see that uh, price is just bouncing between my levels. Uh, therefore, it is neutral. And if you look up at the trend, again, it's red and yellow, which really means let it mellow. Leave it alone. Uh, looking at TNX, this is the treasury. I'm going to make this really easy for you. We don't trade this, obviously. We use it as an instrument. Um, I want to be seeing that the uh, TNX or the Treasury is moving sideways and or down for big, bigger beta names to continue to move up. Um, it came into some resistance um, towards Friday. It rejected, and you start to see that the market started to come in. Uh, sorry, not come in. I think some of you would get confused on that. Sorry, some... What you were seeing is the market pop towards the end of the day. All right. So I do use this as an instrument to kind of gauge uh, where I want to be in the stock market. Looking over here at the dollar, which is dollar sign DXY. Uh, what I want to see here is the same thing. I don't want to see it start to bid above the trendy edges. Notice here that we are rejecting at the trendy edges and that's exactly what they're supposed to do um, so therefore as long as the dollar is hanging under 96.585 i like it i like the market and i'm continuing to look for the melt up if we start to bid above there then i'm concerned and i'm starting to pump the brakes while at the same time checking out the treasury that i just showed you looking at tlt and then that brings me into also looking at the SKU. the SKU are your hedge funds and basically what they're doing is that they're putting all of this information together and they're saying you know what i think we should be protected or i think it's risk on environment at the moment what I'm seeing is a number of 147.34. I only pay attention to the weekly on this. You don't trade this, you use it as an instrument. If you were to put the SPY chart behind this, you'll see that when the skew starts to move up, right, the market's moving down, or you wanna be prepared for the market to start 
moving to the downside. When the skew is moving down, this is when most of your participants are getting super scared. The, the fear is out there. And what I'm thinking about is risk on. So it's the opposite how most retail traders trade. I want to be on the institution side and how bigger banks institutions are trading. Right now, 147.34 just says, be cautious. P call. I'm not paying attention to this at all, but going to go ahead and show you. It's saying 0.68. Uh, basically, you know, you got a lot of people that are kind of torn in the middle, and I get it. The market's really strange. It's been uh, trading a little wonky this year, but at the end of the day, I'm not really using the P call. If you're using it, cool. It's just another instrument that you can use. I do have some numbers here for you uh, that you could put on your charts that can definitely help you. Um, so when we're below 75, you want to be thinking about the put side now this year this is this is why I have an issue with the P call it's really not been that great it has not been great at all uh, matter of fact it's not really worked that well and so therefore I'm ignoring this for this year um, for 2021 it's been really off to be you know very honest with you all right, so the VIX, very, very, very great anticipation that we had last week. Go back and watch the video. We had members in here make over a thousand percent in this by just using the trendy blueprints. What I said specifically, look for price to move up into the 3394 area and then for it to back off. I haven't moved the blueprints. This is exactly what I gave you last week. Uh, and you can see we did move right back into the box that I expected. And then again, traders did very well. So what do I expect now? Well, as long as we stay under that 2035 area on the VIX, I expect the market to continue to melt up a little bit, a little bit of choppiness. If we start to bid above that 2035, just be cautious with everything else that I'm showing you. On the ES, um, I'm not going to go into too much here, but it's very important that I remind you every single week that this is the blueprint that I put together for my members here at Trendy Trading in December of 2020. Matter of fact, you could probably find this blueprint out there uh, when I pushed it out to the uh, social media um, and for everyone to see. And guess what, guys? We are projected to hit my target uh, towards the end of the year. We don't have much longer to go. Today is, again, the 11th. We start on the 13th. Folks, I can't make this up. Um, every single week, I coach my team, and we did just right for this move into this red box. And here we are. We did the same thing last year, and I'll do it again next year. So, what is going on, right? Well, it's the same as the SPY. Remember, the ES is moving about 10 points for every dollar in the S in the SPY. I said that right, right? ES, every 10 points, SPY equals a dollar, okay? So if, for some reason, the ES futures can bid above the trendy edge, we are looking for that move towards my target, my projected target from December of 2020 into 4756. Now, we need that 4720 level. Okay, we get above 47.20. Guess what? We're going to head right into that 47.56. All right. Now, I got some Fibonacci's on here. And guess what? Trendy is going to be hosting a webinar on Fibonacci. And if you're interested, please reach out. We will be doing this. It's going to be somewhere between uh, 90 minutes to 120 minutes. I'm going to tell you right now, you do not want to miss it. Nobody. And I will put this up against anybody out there on the internet can out trade me when it comes to Fibonacci's. I had the best levels out there. I know where to place them and I want to teach you. Uh, and once you see this, it's really going to open up the door for you and make your trading that much more consistent. So don't miss it. And I'm going to tell you right now, as long as price can hold the 4630 level this year, continues and 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 will continue to be extremely bullish into the new year uh, the biggest level going into 2022 is going to simply be 4560 right now 4560 okay big big picture so for 2022 for my projection if we could stay above 4560 we continue to create that bullish trend to the upside okay all right, so I do as well uh, on ES Futures. I trade this almost every night. Um, 
I really started here recently because it's just been fun and I kind of got away from it. Um, but what I'm looking for is, uh, you know, my, my buy signals and my short signals um, with ES on the nightly when I'm trading it. I'm really just kind of scalping for points um, anywhere from five to 10 points or something like that. And I do the same thing on oil futures. Okay. Let's go over here into the NASDAQ and just kind of show you really quick on the monthly. Remember, this was my projection. It also worked very well. Uh, we pushed into the 16,508. Uh, and the way that I see this, just like the NASDAQ inverse head and shoulders on the daily, if we could break above this little trend line over here on your right hand side, just like that, uh, I'm looking for that move into uh, 16,654. OK, for right now. And obviously, if we take out the highs, could be looking for 17,000 into the year end or for New Year's. OK. All right. So over here on oil futures, uh, definitely, definitely interested. Let's go over to the month really quick. We're starting to go inside. We came into the box. All right. This is the level that I give you. We started to bid. And if you took this trade from 63, guess what? You have made a ton of money. We're looking at 71. We are above the very bullish channel of 69.54. And as long as 69.54 holds, I am saying that into this travel season, things start to go back up. Oil starts to go up. Gas starts to go up. Uh, all that good stuff. So be looking for uh, 75 to 80 to 85. And my long-term projected target, if we take out this high, is 93. All right. So Bitcoin. All right. So what are we going to do with Bitcoin? Well, one thing that I really, really like here is that we have come back to the monthly 9 EMA, folks. This is a big deal we are at a support level i love that we've been pulling back for two months uh we went inside and down here okay and we went inside and down here uh we came right into my projected level back in the day here uh, i since removed that but we shorted into this and then we look to go long out of that same thing here inside and down into the green box at the nine ema on a monthly i'm looking for bids to start coming in uh if it flushes but below for for 46931 on the reclaim i'm looking to go long folks okay on the reclaim i'm looking to go long uh inside and up as well there's a lot of confluence here um Definitely be watching names that are linked to crypto that are in the market. Um, if you have any crypto charts you want to look at, you know, reach out. We also have a crypto channel where I believe we have some of the best crypto traders in there. One, because they're just smart guys. Two, because we got the best charts out there and there's not a lot of noise. We just trade specifically technicals and these technicals work. And I show you that week after week. Please take the time out, come learn something, learn how to become more consistent. I'm going to be here to teach you. Uh, that's at trendytrading.co. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like. Uh, as long as I'm getting likes, I'm going to keep giving you content. If I feel like we're not getting any likes or we're not getting any sort of engagement, then it makes me feel like, um, you know, there's just not enough people interested in but I really appreciate you guys. You have a great weekend. And my overall sentiment, again, is extremely bullish. Looking for a potential buy if we were to pull back. Uh, we did really well last week and the week before. And I think that's saying a lot considering the market was not very easy. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. See you soon.